Deriving an individual's supply function of labor requires that we use a graph where we calculate the leisure hours, which I denote as F, F for free time, and the consumption of all the goods and, and services that a normal consumer are willing to consume. So when we derive the, the normal consumption earlier, we, we looked at two different consumption uh, goods. So good one and good two, for instance. Now we have combined them all together into all this consumption, and we call that consumption C. The budget equation will be that we have 24 hours as endowment, and we can get a salary or wage rate that is W. So the maximum income will be 24 times W, and the expenditures will be the price of the consumption times the amount of consumption, and the leisure time. And the leisure time, the easiest way of, of setting a price to leisure time is, of course, that to use the opportunity cost of not working. So if we have leisure time, that means that I'm not working, and therefore I will not receive a salary or a wage rate, wage for this. So we use the opportunity cost here. And to be able to draw that as a budget constraint, we have to rewrite it as normal way. We have consumption as a function of leisure times, free time. So we will have the intercept, the vertical intercept here, 24 times W divided by the price of consumption, minus the relative price, which is the wage rate divided by the price of consumption. We have a maximum of 24 hours per day to use, which then, of course, will be the horizontal uh, intercept. If I don't work, I will not, I will not receive any money. If and I don't receive any money, that means that I can't consume anything, so the consumption will be zero. And on the other side, we have this uh, vertical Intercept here, 24 times the low wage rate W1, divided by the price of consumption, PC. So there you have the normal budget constraint. So find the utility maximizing solution for this consumer. We have to introduce the utility function as well. So we find the utility function that is as far out as possible, the highest uh, available uh, utility that we can achieve. And we see that we have this tangency fulfilled again. So the budget constraint will be tangent to the utility curve. So this consumer will have the possibility to consume C1 units of consumption and will have 20 hours of leisure hours and just work 24 hours. Uh, sorry, four of these 24 hours. So to derive a supply or a demand function, we change the price of the good that we're interested in. And in this case, we're interested in wage, uh, sorry, the, the labor. So we have to increase or decrease the wage rate. So in this case, we increase the wage rate to W2. So we'll get the higher vertical intercept here. Up here, we see that we, since we are receiving a higher payment per hour we're working, that means that we can consume more if we work 24 hours a day. But on the other side, we still have, if I don't work at all, I still have 24 hours free time and will receive an income that is equal to zero. So the horizontal intercept will be the same in both cases. Okay, let's see what happens. We will find a new utility function, of course, which give us a situation where I'm going to receive a consumption of C2, and I'm going to have 9 hours of leisure hours. That indicates that 24 minus 9, that's 15 hours of work. Normally, it's enough to just use two different prices to actually show that we have understood how to derive demand or supply function. But in this case, since we're looking at labor, you actually need to look at at least three different ones. So we increase the wage rate once more to W3. And we see now that that would give us a possibility to consume much, much more again. And 
as in the first case. In the second case, we will have a horizontal intercept at 24 hours. So we find the highest available utility function, and we realize now that all of a sudden I receive a higher consumption level, C3, but I'm taking uh, more leisure hours, so I will work fewer hours. In this case, I'm going to have 12 hours of leisure, and that means 12 hours of labor. And this is the uh, odds thing, so to speak, about uh, labor, because labor, you can't be working around the clock for a longer period. It's impossible. Sooner or later, your body will say that you must sleep. So you will go to sleep, even if you will are willing to do that or not. So it's a natural thing that you can't be offered a salary or a wage rate that gives you the pos that that says that you gonna you are willing to work 24 hours a day because that's biologically impossible. Okay, but where where is the the labor then? Where's the labor supply? Well. We actually don't derive that directly. We have it as an indirect version. So we, we have to use this utility function that we have above, and then we have to realize that when we are facing a salary of uh, a weight rate of one, W1, we are, we're willing to uh, supply four hours of labor. When the weight rate ro uh, increased up to W2, Two, we were willing to work 15 hours, and when it raised to W3, we just wanted to supply 12 hours. So, if you combine all of these, we will have this individual's supply function for labor. And this is called the backward bending supply function, and it, it must look like something like that, just because that we, we must be able to, to, to sleep somewhere. And the natural thing that, if you want to explain it in another way, is that when we have reached uh, this point here, and we will have a negatively sloping supply function, it indicates that I'm earning as uh, rather much. So I'm, I'm rather satisfied with the consumption level that I'm receiving in, in the consumption of goods and services. So I take out some of this increase of wage rate into the normal good leisure or free time. And therefore I will uh, work less. So if you look at it, as long as we have a positive sloping supply function for labor, the substitution effect of a wage rate dominates the in, uh, income effect. But when we are the backward sloping part, the, the negative sloping part of the supply function, then we have a situation where the income effect of this wage rate will dominate the substitution effect.